Hello, I'm Katie. Hi, I'm Beth, and we worked with James to produce this video. Uh, we interviewed a lovely woman called Mrs Clegg about her experiences of living in Lancaster, especially on the marsh. Uh, we participated in this uh, project because we were interested in how stories are passed down. And we really hope that you enjoy her story. I'm Ellen Clegg and I'm 82 years old. Right. Before the war started I have very strong memories of what life was like when I was very quite young. You didn't move about a lot in those days. You, you, uh, people didn't travel like they do now. So if you went to Preston, it was a bit of an adventure. We spent a great deal of time on the, down on the river. Um, most of the men had boats on the river. And um, their families grew up with them and went out in the boats. You learned to respect the water. And that grandfather they lived near us, he used to fish for salmon in the loon in a special way, not with a rod and line. He mm. had something called a hafe net. Hafe nets had to have a special license. They fished from April till August. And it was a form of fishing brought over by the Vikings. Okay. It's still there are still men in Glasendock who fish with hafe nets mm -hmm. and there's some in the Songway Firth that still fish with hafe nets. Also you learnt a lot because I went out with my father and my grandfather and they knew about plants and animals and things like that. Mm -hmm. So you learn. You learn because you were with them mm -hmm. that they taught you. And um, I think at that time, a lot of the older men were still half countrymen. People had come in from the country to work in the factories and things. And I think they had a lot of knowledge which got passed on, which you don't get today. Do you have any stories from your childhood? Um... I remember getting into terrible trouble once. <laughs> <laughs> and there was a big crane at the top jetty and the man who drove it was a friend of my grandfather's and I had wandered off and I sat on the jetty apparently and taken one shoe and sock off and I was filling my sock with chippings and very carefully walking to the edge and letting it empty. Joe spotted me, it was a 23 foot drop <laughs> so he picked me up tucked me under one arm and marched me up Long Marsh Lane, <laughs> took me into my grandmother. <laughs> Where did I get into trouble? Yeah, you know you're not allowed down there on your own. You don't go without someone's with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I never did it again. <laughs> Every Easter Monday was Easter Field Day. Every child in Lancaster got a chocolate egg. Mm. And you went to the Easter Field. The world and his wife went to the Easter Field. And there was races for, and goodness knows what, and the boys played football, the schools played football, and what have you. The loo was at the bottom of the garden, everybody's was in those days. Mm. Um, we didn't have a bathroom, but my grandfather was the first on the lane to have electric power put in the house. But I think he was because two. At least two thirds of people at that time rented. We didn't. Mm -hmm. We bought. I've never lived in a rented house. A great many people were brought up in rented property, and and, and, and I think it was my generation actually after the war, when you, we started to get married, that we bought, and when we got married. Housing was appalling because there was nowhere, um, nothing going. They hadn't built anything. Um, and a bit higher up than that, there was a huge gasometer. And that was put up about 1938. And of its kind, 
it was very, very modern. It was a German one. Mm. And I watched them build it. It was huge. Blocked the church clock and everything out. You couldn't see it. We walked down the quay, onto the quay, and the whole of the sky was lit up with flames. Um, we had quite a few relatives in Barrow. And I always remember my mother saying, come on, we'll go home, we'll have visitors in the morning. And we did. And they stayed, they'd nowhere else to stay. Mm. One of them, their home was completely wiped out. There was nothing. The other had no roof and no windows in. But it was sheer flame in the sky and everybody knew what was getting bombed. The shipyards yeah. at Barrow, mm -hmm. the huge shipyards at Barrow. Mm -hmm. I felt it was strange. I wasn't frightened particularly. It was strange. I think it, it wasn't as bad for us because we were still at home. What it was bad for were the children who'd been evacuated mm. and brought from places like Salford and, and um, places in Manchester mm. were totally out of their depth, totally lost, hadn't a clue. Mm. We had to go to school for half days. We went in the morning and the evacuees went in the afternoon. Um, you couldn't do anything else because you couldn't squash all those kids into mm. a small school. A lot of the teachers were married ladies and that was a first because bef married ladies before the war were not allowed to teach in schools. It was single ladies and men. So when all the men went into the forces they brought these ladies back again. Mm. No. Mm. No. They were not. We had nice neighbours. I think. I think you knew your neighbours. Yeah. You knew mm. them. Mm. A great many men were out of work in the thirties. A great many men. For no benefits. Mm. For no money for six months. That was your lot. You had to help each other or you wouldn't have survived. Mm. Mm. You wouldn't have survived. Um, it was really, I was lucky. I was one of a small family. There were only three of us. My husband was one of six. Mm. And there were families on the estate had nine, eight and nine children. And no money coming in. No work for the father. Mm. Mothers in them days, unless they worked in the cotton mills, didn't work. Mm. So if you didn't work in a cotton mill, mostly it was single women who worked. They worked in shops and offices. But if you worked in a bank, the minute you got married, that was it. Mm. If you worked in the library, you got married, that was it. Town hall. Didn't matter. Once you got married, you didn't work any longer. You started work when you were 14 then. You left school at 14. Wow. And um, unless you were very, very lucky and went to the grammar school. I liked school very much. I would have given a great deal to have stayed on. But children like me, it didn't happen because there wasn't the money. There were children with no, no clothes. They say sometimes, and listen to that thing, and it's children in poverty. I think, well, my idea is poverty is when you can't feed your child and you can't clothe it. Mm. That's poverty. Mm. Not when you can't buy a new game for his Xbox. Poverty. There should be no child without food today in this country. You know, when I was young, there were children who went hungry. 
and women fed the children before they fed themselves. Mm. It's what women do.